The Legend of the Candy Cane, the inspirational story of our favorite Christmas candy, written by Lori Wahlberg and illustrated by Richard Cordray. Legend of the Candy Cane. <laughs> One dreary evening in the depths of November, a stranger rode into town. He stopped his horse in front of a lonely storefront. The windows were boarded shut and the door was locked fast. But the man looked at it, smiled and said, it'll do. All through the gray days and the long dark nights of November, the man worked. The townspeople could hear the faint bam, bam, bam of his hammer and the shnish, shnish, shnish of his saw. And they could smell the sweet, clean scent of new lumber and the deep, oily smell of new paint. But no one knew who the man was or what he was doing. The mayor hoped the man was a doctor to heal his illness. The young wives hoped he was a tailor to make beautiful dresses. Mom, is that a girl? That is a girl. The farmers hoped he was a trader to exchange their grain for goods, but the children had the strongest, deepest wish of all, a wish they did not tell their parents, a deep, quiet, secret wish that none of them would say out loud. No one spoke to the man. No one asked if he needed help. They just waited and watched and wondered and wished. But one small girl watched and wondered and waited and wished longer than she could stand. And one snowy day, she knocked at the stranger's door. Hello, she said, my name is Lucy. Do you need some help? The man smiled warmly and nodded. He opened the door and Lucy stepped inside. A long counter ran down the side of the room. Bare shelves filled the opposite walls. In the back were dozens and dozens of barrels and crates. Could you help me unpack? The man asked. Lucy's heart Mommy, sank. what is that? I don't know. Do you think Lucy will find out? Yeah? Okay. Lucy's heart sank at the sight of all the boxes. What if they were only barrels of nails and bags of flour? But she removed her dripping boots and hung her coat on a peg. On stocking feet, she crossed the rough wooden floor and knelt beside the crate. Please open it, the man urged. Slowly, Lucy pulled, put her hand into the box and pulled out an object wrapped in tissue. Round and heavy, it almost slipped through her fingers. Lucy trembled a little as she unwrapped it. It was a glass jar. Lucy gave the man a puzzled look. Go on, said his nod. So she unpacked another glass jar and another and another until she was completely surrounded by jars of all shapes and sizes, tall and thin, round and squat, jars with lids, jars without. Now, said the man, for something to put inside it. And he pulled over a huge crate stamped with a strange word. Lucy unpacked. Her eyes lit up. It was candy. Her favorite candy, gumdrops. Try some, said the man. She popped one in her mouth. Now she could hardly unwrap it fast enough. Peppermint sticks, taffy, lollipops, chewing gum. Wide-eyed, she looked at the man. We wished, said Lucy. Yes, I know, he said. And here it is. Welcome to Sonneman's Candy Store. I'm John Sonneman. Soon the small store was filled with candies gleaming in their glass jars, raspberry suckers and tiny lemon drops, brightly colored jawbreakers, and long Ooh. tangles of licorice. What the? Those are the long tangles of licorice. They're cherry licorice, I think. Pink and white peppermints for church and butterscotch balls for company. And then in the very last package, in the very last crate, was a candy that Lucy had never seen before. 
a red and white striped candy stick with a crook on the end. What is this? Lucy asked. This, Mr. Sonneman explained, is a candy cane. It's a very special Christmas candy. Why? asked Lucy. Tell me, Mr. Tell me, Mr. Sonneman asked. What letter does it look like? Lucy turned the candy in her hand. J, she said. Yes, Mr. Sonneman smiled. J for Jesus, who was born on Christmas Day. Now turn it over. What does it remind you of now? Lucy turned the candy in her hand. She peered down intently. I know, she said finally. It's like a shepherd's staff. Who were the first to find out about Jesus' birth, Mr. Sonneman asked. Shepherds in the field, Lucy answered, watching their flocks by night. But, Mr. Sonneman, what are these stripes for, Lucy asked. The man's eyes grew sad. The prophet Isaiah said, by his stripes we are healed. Before he died on the cross, Jesus was whipped. He bled terribly. The red reminds us of his suffering and his blood. But then, Mr. Sonneman continued, the candy cane is white as well. We, when we give our lives to Jesus, his blood washes away our sins, making us white and pure as snow. That, he said, is the story of the candy cane. Is it a secret, Lucy asked. Mr. Sonneman looked at her for a moment. It's a story that needs to be told, he said. Will you help me share it? Now it was the dead of December. The town was whipped round by blizzard winds. For days the sun hid itself. But every morning, Mr. Sonneman and Lucy ventured out. They wore heavy woolen coats and bright knit, hand knit scarves. And in their stiff mitted fingers, they each held a bag. They went to every house in town. They traveled to every farm in the country. They knocked on every door. In every home, they told the story and they left a small gift and they gave an invitation. The whole bag of candy A whole bag? They've got a whole bag of candy canes to share the message. On the afternoon of Christmas Eve, the sun finally broke through the clouds and Mr. Sonneman's candy store was finally opened. The mayor came feeling better than he felt in days. The young wives came dressed in beautiful smiles. The farmers came eager to trade grain for Christmas gifts. The children ran in dizzy circles. Yes, their wish had come true. Yes, they had come to share in the opening of the candy store. Mom, I like this girl. Yeah, her dress is pretty, but her smile's pretty too. And her bow. And her bow. But guess what? They shared something more, something bigger, something better. And on that Christmas Eve, they shared the story of the candy cane. They told the miracle of Christ's birth, the misery of his death and the mercy of his love. Stars up! Stars up, the stars are out. The end. <laughs>